Welcome back everyone to a Leaky Leak Cobra Kai Season 6 Watch Party! Now that the show is back in production, the leaks are coming everywhere. We have leaks that Mike Barnes is back, leaks that Sensei Kim will fight Julie Pierce, even leaks of the episode titles. It's everywhere! As the number one source for all information in regards to Cobra Kai, including theories, leaks, and detective work, it comes upon me to evaluate them for you and let you know the truth. The problem with all these things coming out, some of it may be true for the exact reason it appears. Some of it may be true, but has nothing to do with the leaks rolling around. It's like the right prediction, but for the wrong reasons. That happens. Also, there's some pure fakery out there. The first rumor is about Mike Barnes. Now, considering how season five ended, it really felt like Barnes would be back. So any hints that he would be back aren't much of a surprise. There was a post on Instagram, it was from one of the crew, and appeared to show what is Mike Barnes' furniture shop. This led to tons of speculation that Barnes will be back in season 6, yada 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 yada. Except that's not really what it was showing. You see, these scenes were actually filmed at the production studio in Atlanta. It's not even a location shot. Remember this shot from the season 6 tease, Miyagi-Do? This building right here is actually Mike Barnes' furniture shop. Here's a reverse angle with Peter, host of Cobra Kai Companion. Miyagi-Do is right there. The same location was used for when Robbie was released from Juvie. It's Hollywood magic, everyone. But that doesn't mean Mike Barnes isn't in season six. Look at this. Sean Cannon made a pitch for Valentine's Day. Ignoring the cameo at the moment, you can see he's in the exact same place both Tanner and Mary were at when they recorded their season six tease bits. This was spotted by Mel on Twitter X. You see, I don't pick up on everything. It's a great find though. So it is likely that Mike Barnes will be back in season six and probably fairly early in the process, maybe around episode two. As Mike Barnes was a part of the Silver Raid, there's likely fallout that he has to deal with with Johnny and Chosen. You don't raid a mortal enemy like that and not come out as friends. Hopefully since he is appearing early on, he will be around for much of the season. Mike Barnes needs a comeback storyline as he lost much in season 5. He got that painting and it's worth a fortune, but it may not be enough to get him fully back on board. It'll be a lot more interesting for us if we see that process. I've long suspected he could join up with the combined dojos to help them train for the Sakai Taikai. After all, he is a tournament expert and could be key in helping them prepare for the unique challenges presented by this format. You can imagine Barnes working with the different students and how he relates and bonds to each one. It would be great to see him with Hawk. I think they would bond over their mutual bad boy style. Plus, he's a much better mentor for Hawk than Kreese ever was. And maybe he can get in a little bit of a rematch against Daniel. Johnny's not the only one, you know. I mean, he could have won back in 85 and by rights should have. It was only Terry Silver's insane plan, which mostly served as a plot device that led it to that moment. They fought a little bit back in season five, but that was just playful. At some point, we need to show the realization that Daniel's win in 85 was legitimate, but also kind of lucky. Now, there's also more talk about Hillary Swank coming back as Julie Pierce. I've made several videos on that topic myself. I do believe it is happening. However, at the moment, there's nothing directly confirming it or any leak to point toward it, except, well, there's this one thing. A few weeks ago, Alicia Hannah Kim was doing a Q&A on Instagram and was asked who Kim Da Young would fight in season six. She responded, a million dollar baby. This is a direct reference to Hilary Swank's excellent role in that Clint Eastwood movie. This took a lot of people by storm. Is this confirmation Hilary Swank is actually in season six? Well, not quite. To be clear, she did write down in the corner that she was just kidding and has no idea what is happening this season. That is probably true. Usually the actors don't know what's coming up until they get the scripts themselves. That was Alicia Hannah Kim giving her own theories and ideas much like I do. She and I are on the same page. The problem is some people get so excited they miss the reality out of all sitting in the bottom of the corner. But then Julie Pierce likely will come back next season is probably already in the first couple of episodes. Like I said, season six will have a lot of instances of people making accurate predictions, even if the reasons themselves aren't perfect, or in some cases, completely off. I have a great video explaining why I think Julie Pierce will ultimately square off against Kim da -un, and I still think that theory will come true. Clearly, Alicia Hannah Kim is thinking like me, 
and casually throwing the idea out there, even if the fans take it and run with it far more than she ever intended. It happens. I've learned that. You just accept such things and move on. Hey, did you hear the episode titles for season 6 leaked? Well, they didn't, but someone pretended they did. I actually got a message a while back from someone who said the titles were on Wikipedia. Here they are. Obviously, all of these titles are just stupid and almost not even worth discussing. It's important to remember that Wikipedia can be updated by anyone and is often the source of such nonsense. Someone once put in Wikipedia that Terry Silver and Mike Barnes were appearing in Season 3. Obviously, they weren't. It's all fake. Remember, on Wikipedia, you can always check the source for the info. If no source is given, then you know it's fake. It's worth pointing out that I used Wikipedia to confirm the episode titles for Season 4. I did it by following the source. I used that same information to confirm Season 6 would have 15 episodes instead of the normal 10. That skill and resourcefulness is what allows me to be your number one source for all Cobra Kai information and why you should trust me over everyone else. Anyway, let's review the titles and explain why they're stupid. First off, look at the lack of creativity in them. Once Upon a Time in the Valley. That was the name of the song for Kim Da Un's introduction. Why would episode one be called that? Dumb dumb. The Fugitive. Oh gee, that's referring to Crease. How clever. Waiting to strike? It barely makes sense. Blah blah. Really, even for a pathetic effort, these are sad. Young Hearts. Another song. Balance? Why? Why would you call an episode that? I like how there's the title Sakai Taikai. Just like how seasons one and four both had titles The All Valley. Except they didn't. Ridiculous. The person had to squeeze that in at episode 8 because he wanted the last two episodes to be the best around in The Karate Kid, even though that really doesn't make much sense either. It's just an attempt to harken on nostalgia that this show won't do. Not for the last episode anyway. They'll go with something else. Leaks that are so on the nose it hurts are obvious. The reason people make stuff like this up is because they have their own theories but feel if they just present their ideas as a theory, no one will take them seriously. So they disguise their theories as leaks so people will pay more attention. It's a combination of insecurity and stupidity that sweeps through any fandom, including this one. And look, any fan can get caught up in the excitement of what's to come and believe it and then spread it around, not realizing it's probably fake. That's understandable. You're excited, you want to believe something, especially when it seems to confirm something you already believe is going to happen. Like the Julie Pierce and Kim Daoon fight. That makes sense. You want it, so you believe it. The great skill is in being able to distinguish one from the other. Know when it's true, and know when it's fake, even if it's something you think is going to happen. But that's why I'm here. But don't worry, Watch Party will always lead to the right path. Ah, see how I did that? I'll see you at the next Watch Party. I heard that in a car commercial. <laughs>